Well, welcome everybody, and I bring you greetings from Middletown. And today, I have a special message which I've entitled, Focus on God. Focus on God. In order to succeed as a Christian, we need to have the right focus. And that focus needs to be our primary overall focus, because as we know, there's a lot of different things that we have to focus on, but we need to have an overarching focus. We can see from the example of Jesus and his teachings that we need to focus on God, the coming kingdom of God, and its laws, so we understand what the standards are to live by. Let's turn to Matthew 19. Matthew 19, excuse me, Matthew 6, Matthew 6, verse 19. Matthew 6, verse 19, and break into the context here. Some key words from Jesus. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if our heart is in the right place, if our focus is in the right place, then we got a good chance of going in the right direction, which is what obviously God wants us to do. Let's drop down here to verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And as we should recall from other places in the scriptures, God is a jealous God. And he wants our focus to be on him. Otherwise, we're not going to have a chance. At least not with him. We'll fall short. With that being said, we know we still have to get out and live life. There's so many things we have to do in order to live. And these things can distract us. And, and, and in spite of all that, we still got to keep, keep our primary focus on God. Let's... Tr- Go back up here to verse 9, Matthew 6, verse 9, because this prayer helps us with our focus. In this manner, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Notice the order of things in this prayer. It starts out with God as first, and then the kingdom, and then us. The Apostle Paul is another person who had the right focus. And he taught that. Let's turn to Romans 12. Romans 12, and we'll start out in verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, <clears throat> what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So if we have the right focus, then we're going to be able to present our bodies and our minds as a sacrifice to God. Very key that we have our priorities correct. And let's drop down here to chapter 4 of Ephesians. Ephesians 4. And pick it up in verse 1. Because Paul is directing us in a little bit more detail to have this right focus. Ephesians 4 verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And you know, when people find out that we're Christians, and you've probably noticed this yourselves, that they hold us to a higher standard, and if you mess up, they know it and they'll tell you about it. But if someone else messes up and does the same rotten thing, they'll just blow it off because they expect that out of them. 
But see, we've got to keep our focus right so we don't mess up. Verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. It's that focus on oneness with God. So he's emphasizing unity. Now, let's go a little bit further here into Galatians, Galatians 5. Galatians 5, and we'll pick it up in verse 22. For some details about our conduct, if we have the right focus, we will do these things. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And, and if you have the right focus, you can do that. We can do this with the right focus. And that will help us be worthy of the calling that we've been called to. As we presumably know, there are many distractions and temptations in this life, both good and bad. And these things can trip us up. They can take our attention away for, from what it ought to be focused on. It can be... We've got so many things to maintain and fix. When something breaks, doesn't it distract us and take us away from, from something else we'd rather be doing? Yeah, I spend a lot of time doing that. And maybe you do as well. And then we've got people pulling us away, maybe family issues, all kinds of things that can try to draw our attention and take us away from our primary focus. To wrap things up, let's turn to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And we'll pick it up in verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so, with that in mind... Keep the right focus. Keep your focus on God because that's what He wants and that way we can please Him and presumably be resurrected at Jesus' return. The end.